Okay, I'm going to be talking about uh, cursing. And, um, and I wish it were brighter in here without the overhead light. Oh, well. A little bit, huh? Okay, so, um, you know, I, I don't feel to go look up in the Bible all these scriptures and uh, map it out for you. You know, y'all can get a Bible free online, eSword, you can download it. Bibles, you can get them pretty cheap, cover back, I mean, paperback ones, a couple dollars, whatever. People will give you Bibles free, I think, if you ask for them. So, um, you know, you can look that up yourself. Look up cursing in the scriptures and see what it says about it off the top of my head the bible says um if you love cursing you will become a curse see how that top lighting really emphasizes bad stuff you better rather be in the dark a little bit uh if you love to curse you will become a curse because you're speaking it your words have power and you're just attracting that to yourself continually so that's not a good thing to have a continual habit of cursing. Um, it says, curses everyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus hung on a cross for us, a, a tree for us. And he took every curse to himself. So as Christians, what we believe is that every curse, big or small, whether it's something someone spoke over you who's in a position of authority and they said, you know, I hope you fall and die. That's a curse. Don't say that to people. It's bad. Um, or if it's as big as the original sin, you know, the fall from grace, the first man who did that. Uh, Jesus paid the price to redeem us from every curse. So as Christians, our faith isn't in our ability to sin or not sin. Our faith is in the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb. So... Uh, Just as an aside, if you see my eyes start back and forth, go up and down all different places, you can't necessarily judge if I'm telling the truth or not, or if I'm shifty or not by my eye movements because I've had some damage to my mind as a child and I've had um, different things done to me that I don't think every rule applies. I, I look at it myself and say, oh, am I lying? And like if you look down and to the left, it's supposed to be you're talking about yourself and up and to the left is your emotions looking laterally to the right like solid that way like try to say my front door what color it is my front door is white you're gonna look to the right because that your eyes move that way when it accesses that part of your brain watch the series lie to me this is very informational but that is just a science that you can apply but it doesn't necessarily always ring true just like the lie detector test so i just want to talk about too many things But I, I apologize, that's my style, but if I don't do that, it doesn't jog my memory to get to the point I want to get to. Um, cursing in the Bible. We trust in the blood of Jesus. So that's our salvation. And we don't fear cursing. Um, because our salvation isn't in what we do or what we don't do. It's in Jesus Christ. But because we are saved... And we love the Lord and we love light and we love goodness. We're going to want to follow him and do good things, you know. So our faith isn't in our works and our hope isn't in our works and our trust isn't in our works. But our lifestyle will show grace and beauty and kindness and um, gentleness, self-control. So, okay, when you're talking about the subject of cursing, I need to take one 15-minute video for each tiny little nugget or kernel of truth I want to talk about. But it's very interwoven, so, um, God help me, what should I focus on right now? I was saying the scriptures in the Word. Okay, you can look at the Word, the Bible, and see more than just the black and white letters on a page, because... 
Jesus called the Pharisees and the Sadducees whitewashed tombs and a brood of vipers and children of their father, the devil. And I'm pretty sure they were very revered, godly, uh, in public, holy men. They weren't walking around cursing and acting like slang, talking like gutter people they would consider. They weren't speaking curses. But he pointed at them and said they their very existence was a curse. They were like their father, the devil, who can only curse. He can't do anything good. Even his giving is cruel. His uh, trying to bless is, is cruelty because it's deception. So uh, these people who are Satanists who do some good things and some bad things and think it balances out. No, your good things are horrible abominations to God also. And that, that's in the Bible a lot where he says you, you're drinking cups and in their rooms or filthy abominable things. Uh, read the Bible, y'all. Ask God to show you what it means. Then you don't have to go by what some person tells you. These are the rules to live by. You can have a living relationship with God in your heart and you can think with your mind and your heart and use your eyes and ears and senses to experience the fullness of the world around you and make your own decisions because that's how God created you to think for yourself. So maybe as a child you have someone guide you for a while and as a new Christian you might trust somebody else to help you out. You're responsible to grow and mature and find Jesus because he's available to you. So, I want to talk about cursing and where it is in the Word and what Jesus says about it. And I would encourage you to just study that for yourself. Because if you're going to make a decision and say, I'm never listening to this person because I watched one of their videos and they said a curse word. Maybe that is a rash decision. So one thing that stuck out in my mind to talk about was, um, oh, okay, I want to talk about cursing, where it could come from. Uh, it could come from something genetic that in your family line they cursed for decades, for centuries. They just, they're very talented at cursing. And it could be something genetic for real stuff. They figured out scientifically that memories can be passed through DNA. Uh, you can get generational spirits like that and curses. Uh, it could be as a child or somewhere in your life, you took on a cursing spirit. And it could be just from agreeing with it. So I'm just agreeing one time and somebody's got it bad. But usually it's, it's agreeing over and over and over or being around people who they curse a lot. And then you're in agreement with them so much socially, repetitively, that you get that cursing spirit. It becomes a habit. It develops. Just like good habits develop, bad habits develop. And then a bad habit can get a spirit on it. And there really is a difference. It's not everyone who curses has a spirit of cursing. Um, if you really try to stop cursing and you can't, there's a spirit behind it. Because God gives us self-control. Righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost is the kingdom of God. And one of the fruits of the spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit, you should be able to have self-control. So if you don't, what's the problem? There's something wrong there. So, um... There are a lot of spiritual laws that could be broken. Say you judge somebody else. Said, oh, they curse. I never want to be like that. And somewhere in your life, you judge somebody. And then it could come to pass that you end up doing the same thing you just judged them of. So judging is a spiritual law where the enemy is allowed to curse you with the cursing spirit. Um, just things passed down through your bloodline. Um, it could just be a bad habit. Or it could be spiritual. It could be something in the natural. It could be something spiritual. Either way, you can deal with it with Jesus. You know, some people have enough self-control physically to not do it. But still, it's in their heart and their mind. And they feel it come up to say it. But they have enough self-control to not. Sometimes they have another demon of control that makes them not. And then they look all perfect and nice, not cursing. But really, it's still a spirit. A control spirit that wants to have that image of religiosity so it really helps you not curse even though you're struggling with it in your heart you know you're free when it doesn't even come up you know when I started cursing recently it was to make a point and really every single time I would really rather not 
I would really, I like to make lists and check them off. And I like to find out what's right and what's wrong and do the right thing. So I would really rather just never curse ever again in my entire life. And it would be easy to say, well, if you love Jesus, obviously he says never, ever curse. Really? Did he say that? If this was such a big freaking deal, wouldn't he say it somewhere in those four gospels? Make sure to say, don't ever say a curse word. This is the worst thing ever. The only reason I'm not going to say I will never curse again is because I am not God of my own life. I really don't know what God has for me. For the most part, I'm not going to curse, but I can't say I will never, ever, ever do that again before I die. Say something that's a, considered a curse word. For one thing, I don't know if I, if I might stumble in sin or not. I'm trusting God to keep me. I'm believing God will keep me. And I, I don't have a cursing spirit. And I don't have a problem talking for hours on end and not accidentally cursing. And even if I slam my finger in a door or something, I say, ow. I say, fudge. But, you know, I've trained myself to say other things. Uh... The times I've said it recently, I am specifically drawing attention to this heinous evil of raping little children and murdering people and, and controlling other people, which is very vile. And um, this is only 11 minutes. I'm going to get a lot in this one little bit. So uh, I had a friend years ago. She was just a neighbor. And she was a generic kind of Christian really didn't go to church that much maybe on holidays you know but she's a generic kind of christian her mom was old country south lady you know very nice lady but she was telling me how she said a curse word around her mom and her mom went oh and she was like get over it and i, I remember thinking um when you say curse words around me I, it like oh, I, I would get that feeling because i didn't curse for decades you know so this was back when my kids were little and I thought, well, I agree with your mom because I have that too. And I hadn't really thought about that till now because I just didn't have to deal with it. I just didn't curse, so who cares? But God obviously cares about this subject or he wouldn't be bringing it up to talk about it. And there is really stuff by the Holy Spirit to talk about. I apologize. My hair gets on my nerves. Um, her reaction and my reaction was not the Holy Spirit. about that you know when Jesus heard John the Baptist got his head chopped off he didn't go <gasps> or or when he was watching them in the temple and, and he just walked the earth and saw all this so he sighed deeply within himself that I could see as a godly reaction to hearing people curse it was like oh god help them get free if people are just using cursing as with a cursing spirit behind it or giving license to their flesh Really? It's only if there's a spirit that it really gets to you. If they're giving license to their flesh, you should be able to see that by the Holy Spirit and say, Oh, God, help them have self-control and, you know, bless them in their life. I wonder what they've been through that they feel to talk like that. Or not worry about it if God doesn't tell you to pray anything about it. Just, it's not really your business. <sighs> um... If they're in your presence in your house, you can say, you know, please don't say that in my house. But if they're on a video, you know, out in public, it, it's nice to not curse unless there's a reason for it. Like somebody's harassing you and you really want them to get away from you. It's kind of common sense, you know, and that the church world makes such a big deal of it in itself is telling. Jesus did not make that big deal of it. He just defeated it on the cross. Um. That reaction that my friend's mom had was fear. What is the fear? I had the same thing. I'm thinking about it. Okay. I'm afraid. Is, is this something bad? And, and the church hasn't had discernment. It, it's fear. 
And a lot of different things like, is my image ruined or I can't be around you and now do I have to make decisions to not, not be your friend because you curse? It's a fear about an image, about a religious image. Yeah, you want to please God and yeah, maybe you you know, you have a bunch of different motives combined of, you know, I want to do the right thing and I want to please God, but also it's fear. That's not, hopefully, that's not the image of God. That's not righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is not peace, it's fear. So you could uh, ask yourself, Am I overly shocked by a curse word? Am I in fear that I have to change who I associate with? Or, you know, I can't know something because they might have said a, a, an imperfect word in there. It was God's will for me to watch those movies. I was seriously praying about it. And it was his will not to watch them for entertainment, to educate myself, to see the, what's going on in the world and uh, watch it with a critical eye. I wasn't enjoying that cursing. I wasn't reveling in it. And I didn't get a, a cursing spirit from watching it. I'm not going to watch it over and over. Um, there's things that are a curse that don't say a curse word. These people who give and do well, but they're Satanists, but they're giving food to the poor. I bet nothing good comes from that. I mean, God can use even bad things and turn them to good for the person receiving it. But a lot, they're poisoning poor people with those foods. I've gotten free handout food from the FDA. Some of that soup tastes straight up chemicals. And I just throw it out. Canned soup, you, they can't sell anywhere because what's wrong with it? It's like poison. Um, another example I was going to give way back when Pastor Wally in Virginia Beach told a story about he went to Australia and they had an affiliate with a sister church there in Australia. And there were these brand new born again people, young 20s or whatever, and they were just cursing up a storm, preaching from the pulpit, going, you know, they were just cursing, emphasizing how much they love Jesus and telling their testimonies of these great miracles that happened. But <laughs> still not cursing and he said you know they were great they had different miracles of healing or whatever deliverances and then uh, they were teaching the word from the bible but he had to take them aside afterwards and be like look guys you, you should really tone down the cursing when you know you're you're preaching so i'm not advocating cursing while you're preaching i'm not advocating cursing in your life at all the times i have chosen to curse have been because of heinous evil Jesus called out the Sadducees and the Pharisees because they were doing heinous evil and they looked good to everybody, but they were murdering the prophets. They were against the spirit of the living God. They had the wrong spirit and the spirit of a curse. All the spirits aren't, aren't the Holy Spirit are a curse themselves. That form of godliness, it denies the power of God. It, it, it is a curse itself. So I can tell you from personal experience, I went over 20 years, never saying a curse word. And I had a big fat religious spirit and fear and pride and unholy, you know, criticism and judging and not proper discernment and uh, decision making. If I had been going by that religious spirit, I never would have listened to this man's narcissistic channel. And I've gotten life-changing help from that channel. And also God used him in his recent election. This is not a little thing. Exposing the narcissists in our society who are in positions of authority. I didn't make this up. This was not my idea. This was God's idea. To me, it's simpler and easier to just don't curse, nobody curse, nothing with cursing ever. Bye. But the problem is that gets a religious spirit. When you make a rule like that and you make a law and you're trusting in the law and not in grace, you become under the law and and it's wrong. Look at this little fishy. Um, this is what I'm playing with. Look how cute. So the ghost red bag. Anyway, I should put magnets by the by the computer. 
I don't know if I've made all my points. Um, that movie, The Butterfly Effect, when I was watching that, I had that same reaction of, oh, they're cursing. I can't watch this. But one of my kids was really interested in it. I was like, wow, this is really cool. You should watch this. I, I, I forget which kid. So it wasn't when God was exposing stuff to me. It's one time one of my kids really wanted me to see it. And so I watched it to see what they were trying to tell me something about something. But they kept cursing. And I was like, I don't care how bad those sexual abuse people are. I won't curse. I won't let them make me be like that. And I will say it is bad what you're doing. And what you're doing is wrong. But I won't curse. And I had pride about it. And I really thought I was right. And for the most part, I still feel that's basically right. But there's a wrong spirit behind that. It's like a fake nice wrong spirit and it's evil. And the other time I saw something I wanted to talk about, it wasn't Malcolm in the Middle. It was the spinoff show that's like a copy of that called The Middle. And it has that, I mean, these actors are all grown by now. It has that little scrawny kid who's the younger brother. No, is the main character that scrawny kid? There's the sister, the older goofy brother, and then the, the scrawny brother's the, the OCD, really smart kid. And the mom is like the mom from Everyone Loves Raymond, I think, or someone who looks like her. But this little kid, now I don't know if it was the episode when he was just very meticulous, and he was very, uh, you couldn't control him because he was very smart and you couldn't manipulate him. And he made up his mind what he wanted to do and he did it. So like one time his dad asked him to rake the leaves in the backyard and he would take the, the rake like this and put one leaf on it like this and walk over and dump it on the pile and then go get another leaf and pick it up and walk over and dump it on. And his dad was like, you'll never get done. He's like, I'm going to do it. How I want to do it. You want me to rake the yard? I'll rake the yard. It took him all week, but he raked the whole backyard one leaf at a time. That's just how he wanted to do it. So also his dad was telling him um, he should get upset about his situation. I don't know if he was being bullied or what. And um, he was trying to teach him to toughen up and not be such a weenie or whatever. And he was trying to teach him to get angry. And he said, you know, he was very stoic and said, I don't want to get angry. I, I got to look this episode up and put the link in the description box. Uh, he's, and his dad was saying, no, you need to be able to be angry sometimes, which I'm not debating that whole point at all. Okay, that's not part of it. My point is that this kid refused. And so then the dad started doing stuff like faking like he was bullying the kid and making up ridiculous situations to get on his nerves and make him mad and be like, see, now you should be justified to be angry and fight back. And the kid just, he just refused, refused, refused. And I really agreed with that kid. Like, yeah, you can't make me get mad. You can't make me, you can do the vilest, most heinous thing you want to do. And you're not going to make me as vile as you are by making me curse about it or making me be in a rage about it. Or uh, like, you're not going to control me, which is good to not let people control you. Okay. But then again, it could also be pride. And a control that's not the Holy Spirit control, because it's a self-righteousness. But at the same time, that other guy didn't have a right to tell him he should be mad and yelling and getting upset about something. <sighs> My point is we can't control each other to every little degree. And I'm saying cursing and smoking are habits that could be a habit like a gnat could get a spirit on it. It could become very bad. But to dismiss something like an entire person because they say a curse word, that's not good. Because what if God has for you to listen to something they have to say to you? Like this man had something to say to me. What if God has for you to listen to something I have to say to you? And I said that one word. But I can tell you right now I'm free of a, a control spirit because I, when I went to Beauty for Ashes and one time it came up about cursing, you know, some people saw, oh, I got it from a job I used to work and all the people there cursed. And I just repented for agreeing with them and asked God to take it away and he took it away and now I have freedom to not curse if I don't want to. You know, like whoever didn't have self-control about it and you were just compulsively cursing and when you didn't want to or inappropriate times, you know. So I prayed and asked God, and he showed me it was from my friend when we were doing those Christmas carols and walking through town. 
and uh, he had a spirit about it and I was really for hours and hours agreeing with him and talking and seeing that that's where I got that spirit from so I repented for agreeing with him and I repented for going along with all that cursing and that I didn't want it I wanted to be free of it and I also repented for judging people who curse because I'm sure I've done that so whatever way and I know I've been free of it because for over 25 years plus I was able to not curse without even a thought it wasn't a struggle wasn't even in my flesh to say it or do it the only times it's come up now is when I was watching it on a movie or something being like Can I even watch this movie but I know God led me to this and I was tormenting my own self I know God's showing me these truths about stuff in my childhood and he wants me to see this so I could remember something but I'm like but they're cursing I, I shouldn't watch this show but I just prayed God protect me I don't want to get a cursing spirit back I know you delivered me from that and I value that highly but at the same time, he was leading me to watch this thing. So I didn't make a hard and fast rule about it. And then when I started seeing some YouTubers teaching me stuff about narcissism, and they said some curse words, I just really didn't focus on that. And I didn't be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I wasn't loving the cursing, but I was getting the good out of it, what I could get out of it. And I prayed for this person a little bit, a tiny little bit. And um, then I found myself choosing to strategically use a curse word and it's almost like god is like picking a fight because honestly i really don't care i would love to live my whole life and never say a curse word ever again and i've done it for over 25 years i could do it again by his grace of course but i've proven it out that i can do it and this is 26 minutes maybe i'll finish it up with this one i don't know this is not my idea to be saying a curse word. You could say God curses. I don't know. He cursed the devil to hell. And if you refuse him, you curse your own self to separation from God forever. If you see who God is or just completely reject him, you're cursing your own self. He created you and he made you so and you know ultimately he curses you if you don't want anything to do with him then you don't have anything to do with him and that's a curse <sighs> every time it's come up it's been when I've been talking about horrible torture child abuse child rape child murder and and the Satanism and it's almost like you don't deserve to know the truth if you're going to be that much of a baby about it. You have to love the truth. This stuff is effing evil. It's it That's literally true. I think you could say every word there is, and if it's the right spirit behind it, there's nothing wrong with it. You can sing every note. You can play every every vibrational frequency of sound matters what is the spirit behind it and what is the you know the combination of words that you you know to, that you use to say an intent or whatever but this is a very serious subject and it's a very big deal for the church and you know it's more of a big deal than I know until I start talking about it I go oh yeah that's a big deal because the entire church world doesn't know about mind control now how is that they have the spirit of the living God inside of them and they're blind to ministers who are really big names who are slave handlers and secret Satanists this is a really big deal God himself is saying F you you effing effers and the religious world goes oh my you said a bad word my ears don't like that I like the people who say all the pretty nice things and and hearing tickling ear preaching is not what people think it is it's this I'll do another video another time and try to make some more sense but uh, God bless you with freedom and deliverance this Christmas season in Jesus name amen